hey welcome what's going on thanks for joining me this is ij's cave and this is our special halloween review episode so what we come up with for halloween what can we this is a guitar channel what we got to do halloween right well we're gonna ask you to guess what's in the coffin case <laughs> yeah okay so <laughs> it was not the george foreman grill so it must have been this guy right for those of you who don't know this was the guitar that um we did an unboxing for i bought the glary version glary branded version of this guitar i'm almost certain this is exactly the same guitar but uh you know can't swear by it so uh but i'm about as certain as i can be because i actually held that one and i bought this one because it wasn't brand. I wanted to see if there was a difference. I was otherwise, I, I really was convinced that there was no difference, but this offered me an opportunity to see myself and save five bucks. <laughs> so, so I did it. And that's where we're at now. So we've done the unboxing and I've owned it now for more than a week. I've played it every day. So we are going to go do, go ahead and we're going to start a review of this guy right now. All right. We're going to do this. We're going to try and do this like, uh, this is a YouTube channel that's got a couple of dollars. Shh, they don't need to know we're broke. Shh. All right. <laughs> so, to that end, I'm going to try and be thorough here. I'm going to try and do it without dragging out, dragging things out too long. Because uh, these videos can tend to get long, right? So, let's let's try to avoid that. So. I'm gonna actually start on this side of the guitar, okay? Now, on this headstock, it's three head, uh, three and a side headstock. It's actually one side of this, the sides here, along here, 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 on this side actually, is actually just under sanded. All right, I say that because it's true and it needs to be mentioned, but it's not a huge deal. It just means that the guy in the factory. Went over the whole guitar neck with 220, and then when he was doing 320, he forgot to hit that spot for two seconds. That's really all that means. Now, as still, we're still talking about the sanding, we'll talk about the neck shape itself real quick, okay? The neck shape itself is, is, a, uh, is a C, all right? I call this, uh, I, I wouldn't call this a thick C, but it, it's closer to a standard C, but it's kind of like just a little bit too thick. So take that how you will it's not an uncomfortable neck uh I, on this guitar because it's it's bare i mean there's no finish on this at all uh that combined with uh, noticing a couple of little uh imperfections in uh in the sanding that uh it's it's just like if they would have like like they only had so much time uh time to put effort forth to make these necks but if this neck was designated for another guitar that was going to be retailing for five or six hundred dollars i'm sure that this neck would have gotten a little more attention follow what i'm saying it's just this is an inexpensive guitar so they only have so much time that they can put into making the neck so there's a couple tiny tiny little things little imperfections remember we're going into little imperfections now the nut is a plastic nut. That's a standard thing on most guitars at this price range. It does mean that you get less tuning stability because usually those nuts are just cut with the saw real quick. Choom, 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 and they're not sanded and smoothed out. So they're a little rough inside and then they catch the strings whenever you want to go do an eye bomb on the tremolo. Okay. Uh, they say that the rose, the, the neck, the fretboard is, is rosewood. Uh, I don't see a whole lot of reason to complain and say that it's not, except that it just seems a little too uniform and it's actually a little dry. I know I got to get some lemon oil or something on there and that might help fix that. Uh, but it, you know, it could be rosewood. It could be a manufactured wood made to look like rosewood at this price point. I won't complain either way. So it is what it is. The fret wire now, the fret wire is huge on this guitar. The fret wire is actually medium jumbo, which is something you normally see on a more expensive guitar. 
On less expensive guitars, it's customary to put smaller fret wire. On one guitar I own, the fret wire would be considered banjo fret wire. It's that thin. So uh, that's a good thing, okay? And the tuners are really uh, good for the price point. No need to change them until they start breaking, which I would expect for, to happen. A lot of the difference in the quality of parts, once you get to a reasonably good quality level, is the life expectancy. This is why when you buy a, a Fender guitar, you buy a Stratocaster, it's $1,200. It comes with a lifetime warranty. You don't get that with this. That's a big part of the difference. Now that I've rambled a little bit, let's get back to the neck. Now we're actually done with the neck, right? So let's go to the body. Take a look at the body cavity. All right, there's a couple of things here. Uh, first thing I want you to see is here, see all the white stuff? All right, that's the compound. It wasn't cleaned out here. That's the buffing compound that made the body look nice. Uh, also, take a look at the claw. It's actually pretty far back. You don't want it like that, ideally. I'm going to do a setup video with this guitar and then we'll take care of that. Also, in the center claw, there is a uh, wire soldered to it. All right, that's the ground wire. It's not, should, shouldn't be wired there. It should be wired somewhere over here and out of the way so you can get the springs off. Right now, you can't get the spring off without bending this back. Okay, so this is another little thing. And on the other guitar, the one that this actually replaced, uh, I actually checked that on that one as well because I was being a little nosy before I put it in the box and that had the same issue on that one as well. So, something you got to keep an eye out for. Uh, also, uh, over here, these ferrules, I don't know how to say that. One of them is recessed a little too deep. That's this one here. So, that was over drilled before they put the screw in. But these are the little imperfections that you're gonna have, you should expect on a $66 guitar. It's not necessarily a deal breaker, okay? So, uh, as far as the fretwork itself, before I go any further, I wanna remember the fretwork itself. It's actually really well done for a guitar like this. Is it perfectly polished to a shine with edges on the angled sections uh, that are that have been crowned and rounded no but it, there's nothing sticking out on this thing and the uh, sides are all clean enough everything on it is clean enough so that's that's surprising on a guitar at this price level now now we're going to get to the good stuff the tremolo is your basic six point tremolo with a, uh, a, a, an okay block eventually it's a good idea to change that block or just change the entire tremolo for an upgraded one. But not necessary to do today at all. Nothing that has nothing has to be done with this today. This is a future upgrade. The pickups, they're actually usable right now. Are they great? Absolutely not. They are, um, the, the middle pickup is actually kind of weak. And the other pickups, what ends up happening is on inexpensive guitars, they end up wanting just enough wire on there to make it usable. In this case, these pickups, they had to do a little more than that because of the way they've wired them. All right. They're wired like Ibanez guitars. And that means you have three pickups, two humbuckers, and then you have the middle single coil. On a normal Stratocaster, you have three single coil pickups. And then when you use that, you have uh, the switch goes in, the, in position five, it's on the bridge. Position four, it's the bridge and the middle pickup together. Uh, if you go to the middle of the switch, position three, now you're in just the middle pickup. If you go to position four on the switch, now you have the middle pickup and the neck pickup. And if you go to position five on the switch, now you have just the neck pickup. Remember, this is all single coils, okay? And an Ibanez, an Ibanez switching guitar has the same kind of setup, but with two humbuckers, one on the bridge position, one in the neck position. And then you have the single coil like this one in the middle. Okay. So what this switching does is in this position, this is the bridge position. Now the hum, bridge humbucker is on. When it's like that, that's position four. This coil is on, just this coil. Okay. When you go to position three, now this one's on all by itself. When you go to position two, this coil is on all by itself on the neck on the neck humbucker. And now in position one, the entire humbucker is on. 
So you're able to get most of the sounds of a Stratocaster as well as humbucker sounds when you need them. And those are the humbucker tones you want because it's one in the bridge, one in the neck. So it ends up being a very versatile switching. So in order for that to be usable in an inexpensive guitar, the pickup has to be uh, wound to a certain level, power level. So they've done that here. They're not great at all, but they do work in the function that they want reasonably well. The weakest pickup on this guitar is actually the middle pickup. All right. So uh, the only other thing I could talk about, guys, is um, oh, the, the, the switching, the slot for the switch was rough cut and it was not sanded or smooth in any way. It was also uh, overcut. It's going to be hard to see here, but you can see part of the uh, mechanism underneath in that spot there. That's, that's a little bit overcut. Not a huge deal. None of this is a huge deal. I mean, this is a $66 guitar. So, but in the interest of full disclosure, these are the things that I found wrong with the guitar. Uh, there's not a lot that is uh, a huge uh, deal maker. There's no real, there's no real deal makers here. Uh, deal breakers, excuse me. Uh, uh, oh, one thing I do have to mention, the body wood on this, they listed as basswood. It ain't basswood. Absolutely not. I know, I can, I know that in my bones that it's not. And I, and you guys are like, who's this guy? How does he know? Well, I, I have a bunch of basswood guitars because everything in here is a cheap guitar, just about. And most of them that are, ba uh, a lot of them are basswood and they have more weight than this. This is a five pound guitar, five and a half pound guitar tops. Okay, normally a guitar should be six and a half to seven and a half pounds, roughly. All right, the only way you get guitars that light is with this wood called uh, Paulonia or Paulonia. All right, it's I'm not gonna bother spelling it. It's a wood they use in Asia that's they've been used in like making things like flutes and other instruments for a long time, and they've been using it for furniture forever. And it's also the most sustainable wood, wood that we have on the planet, so they want to use this, it's cheap. Uh, and it's it's a decent it's a decent wood. It doesn't hold screws great forever, but other than that, it's a really good uh, good body wood and stuff like that. So, on inexpensive guitars, you're going to see this. This is the introduction point, getting people used to this wood. Okay, and it's not bad wood at all. This body resonates nice. It's got a really really low weight uh, to the point where it actually neck dives a little bit, but it's not too bad. You don't have to sit there. You're not really physically holding the guitar up. It just wants to dip a little bit and then settles. So, and uh, yeah, oh yeah, the pots, the volume and the tone knobs, they actually work really well for a guitar at this price point. Normally they don't turn all the way. Oh, I, what I mean is if they go from off to being almost full volume with just a slight turn. And then for the rest of the turn, there's nothing there until you get right to the end and you get that last little bit of volume uh, or tone. That's usually how inexpensive potentiometers, volume knobs, and tone knobs work on inexpensive guitars. These actually work. So everything, my overall opinion is that every, everything is here to make a good, solid guitar for a beginner. All right. Uh, it, it has a cool look. If you want, like if you, if you got a little rocker in your house and you want him to think that, you know, he's got a, 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 the coolest thing going. Yeah, this is modeled after a little bit of like an LTD and an Ibanez. So it's right up there in the metal crowd. And with that, guys, if you want to see more about these, about this guitar, check out the two videos, one here, one here, any second now, that'll be coming up. That are the unboxing videos. They tell the rest of the story where we're at now. All right. You can also, if you want to see more gear related stuff, check out this one, click on this, on this box here, because that'll take you to the video, my most popular video, uh, review, my most popular review video. There you go. That's what I was looking to say. So and that's that. Remember guys, this music journey we're on is magic quest as well, because when you think about it, when you learn, learn how to play someone uh, a song that they love, you could change their day just like that. So uh, go out there, get motivated, stay motivated, learn music so you can learn some magic too, okay? Don't forget, hit the like, subscribe, notification bell, all that stuff. And uh, I will see you in the next one. This is RJ's Cave. Later.